and apparently for a very good reason. So we have Jan Sim from uh, Mola with us. So he's working for the LVM Linux project. It's basically bugging all the LVM developers to, to fix the missing pieces to, to get Linux working. And yeah, I think the current state is what well, he will tell you, but I think we are kind of jumped off the hook and why that is and how exactly the whole project works. I think Jan will explain us. Thank you. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, attending. So let's see. LLVM Linux project um, about compiling our beloved kernel with Clang. So, um, well, why? Yeah, first question. Um, one of the reasons we um, want to enable that is, well, let's, let's see, uh, uh, let's look at these numbers. We gain speed in the compilation process. Yeah? Um, compilation process right now. Still, uh, we need the uh, 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 GNU linker. Yeah? Uh, we don't have the integrated assembler enabled yet. That's the next step. So one speed. Uh, LLVM is also um, a really fast-moving project. We get a lot of new features in. You see the, the previous talks, the talks after. So um, it has really potential and is start to drive things. One thing that's also interesting for production systems is sometimes, well, uh, you could kind of keep just one tool chain for all of your tools. Yeah? So that has some benefits. LLVM is also used in other domains like audio or video, like the LLVM pipe. Yeah, CUDA render script. So um, there you could benefit from um, collaboration among your teams or um, kind of keeping your optimizations um, available across all those domains. Um, also, we have the static analyzer. Um, we had a Google Summer of Code project this summer, and uh, the student managed to get the static analyzer running uh, against the Linux kernel. Yeah, there are still a few glitches here and there because kind of the static analyzer was mostly for user space. Yeah, we were st uh, still thinking uh, about user space here, but uh, let's see. So here we have it uh, live, one of the latest reports. And um, we integrated in our build bot. So if we manage to get an x86 build through, we get a fresh report. Um, the nice thing about Checker is we can find um, issues which kind of have a quite deep path yeah, so y you inspecting that kind of by human or visually, you, you wouldn't find it. Okay, so still, um, we probably need uh, uh, more <coughs> work here because there are still a lot of false positives. Yeah, uh, so one thing that Checker doesn't uh, support yet is if um, kind of if the um, if we have an um, uninitialized variable. Sometimes the variable is initialized through a function call, passing a pointer and stuff like that. That's something that's still kind of missing in Checker. Or, well, it's we are crossing the boundary, so that's pushing Checker a bit. Um, still, it's uh, useful. We just need to kind of rule out the uh, false positives and uh, massage it a bit more. Good. Static analyzer. One interesting thing, um, well, the last talk was also <coughs> about security. Um, we found this comment here in one of the um, <coughs> mailing list threads we had. And he said, well, uh, it might even be more secure to have 
multiple compilers, yeah, because it makes your operating system more secure. <coughs> yeah, you cannot predict on one compiler how it compiles your code. Yeah, if you have multiple compilers, you have differences amongst the compilers, and that makes it harder to predict things. Well, one interesting um, opinion here. We have a few um, other areas where Clang or where, where LLVM uh, holds interesting value. So for example, story. Um, <coughs> Google compiles its code base two times, actually. Yeah? It compiles it with GCC for production use, but at the same time with Clang, and um, they filter out the uh, diagnostic messages, and if they find an error, um, they have an automation in place. They can even correct the most obvious things with Clang. Yeah, we can even <laughs> propose uh, bug fixes here. That's interesting. Um, there's even a video here on this side. Um, we had an idea with Checker to kind of do um, sort of a sparse-like variant with Checker for the kernel, or kind of Coquinel. It's kind of always the same um, idea, um, but um, that's probably for the next Google Summer of Code. Now, yesterday I, I was sitting in a few more talks and uh, that leads to a few interesting ideas, yeah? Already um, thinking what we could do. So yesterday we had a talk in Jensen, uh, who ate my battery, and they are using LLVM to find out how much energy is consumed for the instruction on your CPU, yeah? So they can say <coughs> instruction X needs that much energy. So now they want to map this back to, well, energy instruction. Now let's the comp let the compiler decide, do we kind of execute X, or do we execute A and B to reach the same result, which uses less energy but is slower? Yeah, so they want to make decisions based on the energy uh, used by the instructions. And, um, uh, today there's another talk in here about, about the analysis uh, through LLVM. It was just on. It was just on. It was, it was just before this. Yeah, but there, there's another. It's 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 it will be it will be done here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it's just done, um, and but uh, yeah, they will be here in here too. That's why. Good. So um, now you start thinking, hey, what about kind of compile it for performance or power save or even JIT or whatever. Yeah, so you can, you can have crazy ideas now even. Oh, hey, could we sort of uh, instruct in SMOT yeah, to load a kernel module for power or for speed? Just crazy ideas. I guess you could just have two versions of a syscall implementation in the kernel. One yeah, for possibly. power and one for optimization. Uh, just crazy ideas. But, yeah. but let's, 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 let's just think of what's possible, yeah? So that's kind of pushing the boundaries. Well, uh, as you see, the power, power efficiency gets more and more important, yeah? I remember um, an, um, a lead developer from a silicon vendor, yeah? telling his, his um, uh, developers, guys, expect the power management teams to sit in your back, yeah? You need the power management code in your driver, whatever, yeah? Or they will visit you, yeah, standing behind you and watch you typing it in. It, w it, it, it is needed. So, well, well let's see. So, um, LLVM is already used in projects related. So
So, for example, render script uses <coughs> LLVM. Or LLVM is meanwhile also part of the Android and NDK. Uh, graphics, Gallium 3D, and Sylvester um, does the user space rebuilding uh, Debian with Clan. <coughs> so now, let's go to the kernel side. So, the LLVM Linux project, we want to build the kernel um, completely with Clang. And um, that, of course, for, for sort of multiple architectures. Uh, by the way, the universal driver would be a really good thing to have. Yeah, but that's still um, some work to do. Yeah, right now, cross-compiling is a bit hard with Clang, right? But... Um, it's getting better. Yeah, yeah, well, needs, needs time. Um, so, and we want to find out what's uh, kind of uh, breaking the kernel. Um, so, right now we get it working, and once we have that working, either the kernel merge window opens or the clan uh, the, the LLVM merge window opens. Yeah, so we, we, we still have. Uh, some work to do, and uh, we are kind of a sort of meta project. Yeah, we, we collect the patches needed to do that, and then we push it upstream to the respective communities. And if you want to try it out or join us, of course you are welcome. So, <coughs> um, as we have now multiple moving targets, yeah, the kernel. LLVM clang. Uh, we put together a, f a bunch <coughs> of make files, <coughs> and you can get it here. Uh, it's hosted in a in a Git tree, and um, with that you can fetch LLVM clang, build the kernel, apply the patches needed. Yeah, so just you just go to target x86 64 or target. Uh, VExpress or Target, uh, what do we have, Nexus 7, <coughs> a few others, and hit make in there, it will download, pull all this stuff down. Um, we run, <coughs> yeah, so we have um, <coughs> patches which we apply to Quilt, and um, we can also use a few um, compiler, um, so we need the compilers here for the linker part, right? So compilation will be with, with Clang, but uh, for the linker part we need these. So that's an example how you could uh, fire it up, clone it, go to targets v express. That's a good uh, uh, target to start with because we can emulate it with uh, QMU, yeah, so that gets you a quick uh, uh, system up quickly. Um, targets v express, sync, and then build, power off. It's, it's also, actually it's enough to just hit make and that will do all of it. <laughs> Now, what do we have right now? We have x86-64, which tracks mainline very closely. Um, the uh, Versatile Express also tracks kernel mainline. Um, the other targets, well, uh, the embedded stuff, it's usually uh, fixed to an uh, older kernel version. <coughs> and um, we are already also doing some test builds with uh, AR64. <coughs> we have uh, build for up, which does uh, continue the builds uh, on the uh, VExpress target and on x86. And uh, we also get the checker runs done um, when the uh, Compilation completes. We also uh, run LTP um, against it, so um, 
we can then check if our kernel well really does what it should do. <coughs> so what's the current state of um, the LLVM Linux project? So two sides, LLVM and kernel. So for LLVM, um, uh, all patches which are essential right now are in Clang 3.4. Yeah, the LLVM community was extremely helpful. Thanks a lot. And um, for the stable release 3.4, the um, needed patches are in <coughs> Clang mainline. So uh, we have a few more things going on. Uh, for example, for x86, we need, for the old boot code, yeah, we need 16-bit x86 support. Yeah, um, Kind of a year ago, we were debating with um, Peter Envin and others, ah, how can we do that? And nobody wanted to touch the 16-bit code. And like uh, three or four weeks, David Woodhouse um, Submitted, started to submit patches, and now we have that, which is cool, great. And he also started to kind of clean up the, uh, the kernel and um, add a, a kind of a nice, nicer flag to GCC, which makes this really easy. It's now just a flag, I think, minus M16. 16, yeah. Minus <coughs> M16. And that's now consistent for GCC and for Clang, so that will be really easy in uh, Clang 3.5 and uh, it will allow us sooner or later to really use the integrated AS that's uh, that's the goal now what do we face regarding the Linux kernel so we still need uh, patches for the Linux kernel and here are a few reasons why um, the kernel <laughs> with um, kind of, well, default compiler is GCC, so we kind of expect the behavior we see here. So GCC um, 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 gives us GNU 90, which is uh, C89 with a few additions. Um, and uh, Clang um, uses the new 99. Yeah, so we have differences in here, and uh, we need to rule those places out in the kernel where we have, uh, where we depend on the uh, behavior here. <coughs> also, uh, GCC and the kernel, they were always kind of developed side by side, yeah, and we're kind of pushing each other. Hey, can we do that? Yeah, kernel to GCC. Oh, well, yes, let's, let's just do it like this. Yeah? So we have a few <coughs> uh, places here and there where uh, the kernel expects some behavior which GCC provides, which is, we don't know where this comes from. Yeah? It's just there. Um, and we have also differences in uh, some built-ins. Um, but uh, we can we can work this around. One one um, kind of nasty thing is the built-in constant p. That's that's still bugging us quite a bit. Um, yeah, that's just um, so. One thing that was uh, bugging us was GCC returned false. Yeah, for an unsupported flag. Uh, but Clang returned true. Just a warning and true. Yeah, so all the CC option, all the tests, do we support this flag? Yeah, uh, returned the wrong value in the kernel. Yeah, so instead of disabling mm. whatever, yeah, we had them still enabled. Yeah, so um, we had a kind of, kind of, we had to rewrite, rewrite those rules uh, but, well, meanwhile, 
Clang 3.4 does or uses the same behavior as GCC now. Yeah, so we are one step further into being um, compatible or kind of using less patches to build the car. Um, I think I think there's still another one with a warning, which with with the uh, meaning still flipped, but that's a minor thing. So now um, a few more interesting uh, things. So GCC uh, can. Um, use the, this line here, register unsigned long current stack pointer ESP. So we use this, um, we, as, we uh, assign this uh, current stack pointer and we say it's a register, but we can use it as, an, as a variable later on. Um, Clang <coughs> doesn't like this. Well, now we want we, we have just one place here, and that is the current stack pointer. Um, now, well, that's the x86 version, but we have then the same for ARM. So we would have to uh, change what kind of one or two lines per architecture. And the only thing we need, is we, we just need <coughs> the stack pointer. So uh, right now we are uh, looking into multiple solutions here. So either... Um, and you build in, yeah, the built-in stack pointer, which uh, should be added to Clang. I think it's already there. GCC not yet. Yeah. Did they like the idea? Or? Um, I haven't heard any any opposing yet. <laughs> that uh, that uh, Mark mentioned over the current stack pointer was just patched uh, this week. It's um, patched by Andy Clean. To change this uh, macro to uh, inline functions, uh, yeah. problems among our existence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but right, right now we have the second option available. Um, we can kind of uh, just add one more line, and Clang will um, support it. So right now we will probably go with the latter version. Yeah, that's now our biggest, I would say, our biggest problem right now. So what's this? We call it Blaze. Um, so <coughs> it's not a variable, a variable length array. A simple variable length array is perfectly fine. Yeah. Also, a flexible, flexible member would be fine. Then you would have A at the end of the structure. Place here means the uh, uh, variable length of rate is somewhere in the middle of the structure. And that uh, is not and will not be supported in Clan. <coughs> um, now, even a flexible member in the kernel, you tend to embed a structure into another structure. Yeah, bang, then you have also flays. Even if the original structure it w where it was a flexible member. So that is kind of a really big problem for us right now. Um, Blaze, um, because we cannot uh, support that with Clamp. We have a few areas where this is used. Uh, especially in the uh, net filter code, but okay, that will be replaced in the long run. Yeah, we have the uh, new firewall code uh, already merged. So okay, that, that just takes time. But um, also the gadget drive, <coughs> that's solved. But it is, uh, you can find it in a lot of uh, hashing or crypto code. And the, the uh, to make it worse, a lot of this code gets now copied, cut and pasted, all over the kernel. Yeah. So, um, for example, just kind of three weeks ago, 
the uh, AES part of the uh, Wi-Fi layer. Yeah, they just copied some crypto thing in for AES and place. Yeah, we have a few patches for that, but kind of we in the end we will probably have to find all places where this happens and kind of untangle it um, so we don't use place anymore. Right now um, we are a bit of struggling with the crypto guys so we get the origin solved um, before more people start to copy it. Yeah, but that's that will take some time. Interest. Why, why, why is time opposed to doing it just it's, uh, it's not. It's not even part of the C standard. <coughs> and it can be horribly inefficient, and it's a bad way to program. So you shouldn't be encouraged to do this. Yeah. Right. Um, well, last last year, uh, mid last year, Plumbers Conference. Yeah, we had liners in the room. Uh, first, well. Uh, isn't that the uh, variable length array? No. Oh, yeah, it's it's crap. Yeah, we shouldn't do this. Yeah. So Linus said, okay, actually, we shouldn't. Yeah. But it, it now takes time to uh, get through the code, find an acceptable solution for the maintainers, and get it upstream. That just takes time. So I think the biggest problem with this structure is that also depending on n, it doesn't really influence where all the members are after that, but it also affects, of course, the alignment of the objects out yep. there. So if you have like a character array followed by an integer followed by a big floating point number. And if you have an array of those, if you have an array of those structures. Yeah, it, it just becomes it's it's less, so just uh, stupid. Yeah, you shouldn't do this in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Bad. yeah. But <laughs> yeah. right now we have this and it's starting to uh, get just worse. Yeah. So. Um, our next step is we want to um, enable a, a bot for um, Linux Next, yeah. So um, and uh, start to kind of bark early, mm -hmm. but it, it it will still take time to get this fixed. So if you see this code, find a better solution, please. Um, well, that's a minor one. So there's only one driver in the kernel, uh, ThinkPad ACPI, which uses nested functions. Um, I th that will probably go away. Um, and uh, well, I don't know if, if, if that one is still in the active Android use. Has, the yeah. Android stack has a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah, but that is getting removed as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now a few more bits and pieces here. Um, yeah, alias. For driver modules, um, we have the place where we have the module in it, yeah, where we uh, assign the, the init procedures <coughs> called from the kernel, where we make the connection, kernel entry point a driver my init yeah so this connection is made with um, attribute alias a weak alias the issue right now is our module here has another section attribute yeah underscore underscore <coughs> init so over here we have underscore underscore init now the uh, um, the variable which which gets assigned the alias doesn't inherit that in Clang. Um, so we we found that kind of we are oh we we, l we lost our section, which which breaks for example all the uh, um, yeah module init and module exit stuff. It's well. It it will load, um, but um, the uh, uh, mechanisms which are used in conjunction with drivers, driver modules, don't work. Well, right now we just add the section. We just have one place, yeah. So we just reapply the init and the exit there. 
yeah, small change in the kernel. Um, what we also saw, well, actually, it's a feature. Um, Clang you uh, had an optimi or has an optimization merge globals, and um, we we ha we have the uh, we express build running with um, section mismatch, debug section mismatch, and we got like that much messages. Uh, Reference from here to there doesn't match. And we were like, why? Where is this happening? Yeah, so um, uh, two weeks ago, we, we sat down, three of us, and kind of started to stretch our head. Where is this happening? Why? And we started to look at, at mod post. Yeah, and it turns out they use a simple whitelist. Simple name, reference from a function which is called like. Um, um, like the tables, like like uh, uh, device ops, OPS, yeah. So they have uh, uh, a few simple names, which they allow references to init code, and they do a simple check on the name. We looked at this and said, "Oh, wait a minute." And then we looked at the uh, output from, from the compilation with Clang, and we just saw merge globals. So Clang would, uh, would kind of op try to optimize and stuff all symbols or all, all of these variables into one symbol merge globals. <coughs> yeah, optimize. We, we don't need the names. We just need the address, yeah, kind of. Stuff it into merge globals, and mod post would say, Oh, merge globals to whatever, not allowed. Yeah, or, or bad reference. Yeah. So, okay, then um, we looked at, hey, there's a m no merge globals, and well, now it works, yeah? We have all symbols individually, can match on the names. It's, it's it works without, it's just, well, to uh, uh, please the tools we have right now. <laughs> Um, <coughs> yeah. Differences in how um, uh, compilers operate. Um, this is the uh, extern inline. Yeah. So uh, extern inline, the handling is different. Uh, for now, in the kernel, we just replace with uh, static inline. Um, this is yeah some crypto code, um, and the the first line here is just kind of mind-boggling. Uh, and uh, Clang is has the same opinion, um, so uh, <laughs> it, it just doesn't li like this. If you uh, splice it out into two lines, um, it start to starts to get readable. It also works after two lines? Yep, yep. it works. Okay. So, um, cross compilation. So, right now, we use Clang to compile the kernel, but we disabled the integrated assembler. So, um, there are, um, as we started, there were patches which could compile even with the integrated assembler on, but they were disabling a lot of functionality in the kernel. Uh, so for now, we decided we turn the integrated assembler off, yeah, fix fix those things first, and then throw the switch again. For x86, the biggest problem was COM16 support, yeah, the boot code. Uh, right now, hey, we have that, so that is um, we could. Uh, try to enable it again. For ARM, we, s we have the problem that um, we need to uh, have the assembly code in the unified format. And right now, I think the integrated assembler is disabled. It, no, 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 it's enabled by default and supporting almost all pre UL. So There's just one thing which is the yeah. macros, and that will be it. And they will be macros. Easy, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, thanks. <laughs> now, um, well, we are on the way, yeah? So, 
just macros left. Uh, one thing that's missing, well, we still need um, the uh, assembler and the linker right now. And for cross-compiling, well, you, you have to specify the, pa the path to the tool chain. So it's, it's a bit hard to set up, but um, you can look at our uh, make files and scripts, yeah, or just compile with v equals 1, and then you see all the options and how they are uh, set up. So uh, that's the patch count right now. Um, we uh, have kind of a set of common patches, which is all the make file foo, yeah, the, the, the uh, compiler support, some uh, uh, option enabling, disabling, um, and also um, core drivers and drivers. Yeah, like the play stuff, yeah. That's why we have quite some uh, common patches here. And then we have um, patches related to the various architectures, ARM, ARCH64, and x86. So what do we have? Um, we still, you see, that's like 30 patches. We still have to upstream like 30 patches. Yeah, uh, that means kind of getting getting those patches in a shape which can be upstream, uh, getting it through the maintainers, and uh, uh, make sure it it ends up <coughs> in one of the trees. Um, we still do not enable all sorts of drivers, all sorts of subsystems. I did uh, kind of start with uh, all yes config, yeah, and started to strip out what is not working, and I documented that on our homepage. Uh, it's still quite a big list, mm -hmm. yeah, w of stuff which just doesn't work yet. Um, that's, that's here. <coughs> place in all different folders and subsystems. Um, I think the weak alias and section attributes, that's, that's a minor thing to fix. <coughs> um, and um, the last one is the integrated sampler, which is working for this. Yeah. So right now, the most uh, pressing part is kind of upstream the patches and fix that place. <coughs> Are there any <coughs> maintainers that don't want to remove their place? Crypto right now. <laughs> <laughs> Crypto right now. Yeah. They, they, they love it and they don't want to touch it. Yeah, kind of. It works with GCC. But that's going to change. Yeah. Because yeah. The, the main problem now is that it's fast enough. On that specific case, GCC optimized for that specific case to work fast. And then they have no reason to move away from it. So the idea now is to, with the GCC folks, is to change the alternative to be faster than that one. Yes. Then they will have an uh, yeah. incentive to move yeah. away. Yeah. Next time. Yeah. Um, and um, so, but if, if you're going to write a patch to replace the place, they will just reject it. They rejected it. Yeah. Yeah. That's not. We sub we submitted it. Uh, for um, what was it? The uh, this this uh, um, so so can maybe can maybe the Git repo be maintained where we just do it and then tell people who want to use Clang with Linux kernel. Use that yeah. Bit. So uh, beside our bunch of make files, um, we have also a JIT tree, uh, which is which we we update kind of in the next one or two weeks. <laughs> Um, and uh, where where you can pull kind of the, uh, Linux with the patches on top, yeah. That's just uh, it will be done kind of yeah, sort of next week yeah, or in two weeks. While these people are going to keep on rejecting it, we yeah, we need something working. Yeah, um, so give it kind of one or two weeks for the uh, uh, Git tree to, to be populated. Uh, so you find this stuff. 
a on the home page uh, llvm.linuxfoundation.org um, and we have a G tree for um, the make files that's in llvmlinux.jit yeah, llvmlinux.jit is the make files which kind of uh, fire and forget does everything for you and there is a kernel tree but um, that needs some updating that's true <laughs> for, for the next two weeks yeah Um, that's that's a work in progress. We want this tree to also have a new uh, branch for Linus um, where we can queue up things which are already good enough to, to be pushed out. Um, yeah. And as I said, there are a lot of options which are not enabled by default in our builds. Yeah, uh, just to get things to keep things running. Yeah, um, what's disabled, for example, um, right now uh, net filter is disabled. Uh, right now, I think uh, ButterFS just got a piece of flace, kind of three days ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like mind-boggling. Yeah, but th that's why we we need a Linux next target to be able to to bark early. Um, it's it's just um, yeah. So try it out. Like in, in one or two weeks, we have we have the patch set on top of uh, G tree for you. Um, test it. Try various configurations um, and submit bug bug records so, so we can kind of track what's um, what doesn't work right now and how we can fix it. Uh, get patches into the Linux kernel. Yeah. So uh, look at the patch queue we have right now, and uh, we would love some help on upstreaming these. Uh, the more we get done, the better. If you have kind of an embedded target, yeah, like I don't know, uh, we have the Beagle Bone, we have the uh, Nexus 7, the Android kernel supported. If you have a board, like whatever, all winner, you can submit a patch to add a target into our uh, uh, make files, yeah? Um, and um, uh, just uh, send it to the mailing <coughs> list. What is the state of PowerPC? PowerPC, um, no state yet. <laughs> you are free to submit a target. No, uh, honestly, uh, how can we need to try it? So we have ARM, um, AR64, and x86. Oops. Um, well, no, we had we had nobody with the MIPS uh, board, but we we ha um, I think we started out with the MIPS target, but we could maintain it. Yeah. So it, 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 it's not hard, actually, you just need to set up a target directory, copy over a uh, configure file, and set the architecture. So uh, it's just a few lines. Um, and uh, if you have a mix board at hand, uh, you can try it. Just contact me on ISC or email. Uh, the address is will follow, and you can uh, work that out. Yeah. It's just that I, I don't have a mix target. Uh, to try it out. Yeah. All right. So, if you have any questions, uh, <coughs> I will uh, answer them. You can contact us uh, through the mailing list here. Uh, we also have an ISC channel, LLVM Linux on OFTC. And we have also some logs here uh, of the IS section. All right. At the beginning of your implementation, you, you said that Crank is now for a, a smaller footprint on a faster compilation time. Did you observe this effect on the Linux kernel? So, the um, the same scale? Uh, we are getting 
So this is the latest GCC in plan. We are, we are <coughs> getting really close. So what we found is that um, the uh, compiled binaries are slightly bigger. And um, from, well, from a runtime benchmark, I, I cannot tell kind of it's 10% faster, no. Uh, but um, on my uh, laptop at home, I can run the Clang compile kernel and it, it feels really smooth and sluggish. So I can't I can tell it's kind of 10% faster than GCC, so that, that, that's just not true. Uh, we are kind of close, yeah. But I think there's a lot of potential. Uh, we 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 have a, um, a lot of optimizations which can uh, be done still. So yeah. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned the dependency on on LD. Like you tried any uh, other linker, like MC linker or uh, gold that could be used as a um, You can try, it's just we just didn't try yet. Yeah? So MC linker works fine with LVM as, as Well, as, as long as it works with, the, with uh, if you compile, if you can compile it currently with GCC and, your in, and this linker, just try it. I don't know. I was wondering if you have tried. Yeah. I don't think the MC linker will work with the kernel. If yeah. you have a small tailor to, so for now, I think it's being tested on embedded devices and very specific cases. Yeah. So I think uh, David was saying that he they tried MC linker and the LOD and they are okay on some cases, but they don't work with the general case. So yeah. it, there's still some work that needs to be done for the LOD and linkers to actually be production quality for the kernel. Yeah. yeah. So in, in general, you can say kind of uh, a project as kind of big as the kernel, it's kind of pushing the compilers quite hard. Yeah. Uh, so uh, um, there can be really interesting core There was um, another question. Built into that pointer, I think it's interesting because it's had quite a bit of discussion on the LVM mailing list but hasn't gone to GCC at all, and you need yes. collaboration between the two projects. Yes, we would need it in both. But there, you haven't even mentioned it's GCC. It's not been on any of the mailing lists, it's the first I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we, we, we talked, uh, when was that uh, idea introduced? It was during slumbers, and I think we talked with a few uh, GCC guys there. It just, it, it just didn't make it right now. Uh, to the mailing list, um, it just takes time. Yeah. So I guess the bigger point is that if we have two compilers, we have to collaborate effectively, not make decisions in private on one mailing list. So I, I, I would like to pull that one because I think this is really important. And I've been talking to GCC guys in private and so we need more collaboration. We need to know, can we guys, LLVM, go to the GCC list and, and, and communicate? It was the thing with the programmers for the vectorizer. Right? I don't want to introduce something that GCC will have to implement, and then they will hate us because we invented a new thing and they have to support. Because right. we hate them for the things that they invented. Like <laughs> 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 we, we need this collaboration, but so far, every step that I try to do towards asking GCC for ideas or if they accept our ideas, I got nothing. I got a wall, really. I, I'm talking to the wall so far. So if we could send an email to GCC email this without being killed, that would be lovely. <laughs> right? And if they would actually talk to us and say, oh, this is a good idea, oh, this is a horrible idea. I have a better one. Excellent. Even that. Yeah. Excellent. That would be even better because we, we don't have the best ideas ever. Right. So if they have a better one, excellent. Let's just do it. But let's do it. Right. That's mine. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, you're right. We need that collaboration. Otherwise, the things like that just don't work. Yeah. And we bounce from one side to another and back. Yeah. And, and to work. 
test tweets, so that you don't need to check that uh, compile twice your own modules. So the problem is if you want to compatible with uh, CLang and EBC, you need to recompile this boost compiler. So I think that's the problem. Uh, you, you think for driver modules? Yes. Oh, actually, uh, funny thing is, um, um, when I install um, a Clang compiled kernel on my on my uh, big laptop, uh, I need to compile the graphics driver again. And it turns out I can compile it with GCC pretty fine, yeah, just ignoring the warnings, uh, and it still works and loads. So uh, that's kind of amazing. But yes, it works. Yeah. So you can you can mix a Clang compiled kernel with a, with a GCC compiled module. It works. Oh, we do this in Android. Yeah. We use the Clang compiled kernel with the GCC compiled Android stack and vice versa, and it just works when it works. <laughs> <laughs> Android already compiles the kernel, or only parts of it. Yeah. Yeah, parts. <coughs> uh, when you spoke about the static analysis of the kernel, you mentioned the Coxina project. And the project led to a thousand of patches to solve potential issues in code. And does it, uh, your project was able to provide such kind of fixes? So the, the, the idea behind with Twitter um, in mind is that uh, at the LLVM IR level, you have much more information at hand um, to find the issues, yeah, because you, you have the, the real. Um, uh, intermediate representation and not just kind of parse things. Yeah, so you can you can make uh, uh, better decisions and and uh, uh, change the faulty code. Yeah, but that that needs some more research. Yeah, so it's just we have then more insight. That's the difference. Okay. No, this one here is a wrong question. Um, so. If you can mix um, LLVM compiled kernel with uh, GCC compiled modules, that means that all the alignments of these structs are identical between. It should be. They should be. Yeah. All right. It's a correct. It's not. It's a bug. On the right side, it's a bug. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. That was the question. Oh. So regarding your Valais problem, uh, I think you should. Whoever commits Valais to the kernel. <coughs> You go to who is, find the post address, and send a postcard with an unhappy penguin saying, You made a penguin unhappy <laughs> today. <laughs> Pro yeah, probably. Um, I, I can hook it up into the Linux next build and send an e card. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and a t shirt with an unhappy penguin. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, wonderful. Well, let's thank John Simon. about the place thing. I was talking to the Naro GCC guys and they said we have oh, yeah. to make it faster. The non place uh, code, we yeah, have to make yeah, it faster. The idea, yeah. I just, yeah. So what I want you to know do is about to get the Valais yeah, implementation and your non Valais implementation and send it to okay, me. Yeah, good. So I can create a benchmark yeah, and, and, and give it to the GCC guys. I got to so get they a they yeah. your yeah. Need to organize these backers. And then they have, at least or not, and then I have a reason to actually. Yeah, I say the last version. The second last version. Okay, great. I see a point. Um, it's lunch. There's no, no lunch. We don't have lunch. We don't have lunch. Break. No, no, we just send a message for a bring, bring us food if you want. Oh, I do. Or oh, if you want, we can leave you on my code. Yeah. Okay, I won't mind. Yeah. You already know the slide and you already know how to contribute. So when is your. It's now. It's now. Yeah, yeah. right. But now I have to explain to Tobias how to use the video. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so can you come? Yeah, I'm done with the so where did you send your proposals? I did. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. no, I know, I know, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. You, if you're shouting at a brick wall, you're shouting at a brick wall. You've got to send. Yeah.
And it should be easy, right? Yeah. At least yeah. for you and I. It's not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we agree, and then There's someone only else. One phone call, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Same company, one year now. I think it's probably one of the hardest yeah. problems I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> convince people to get a consensus. Yeah. And what John Simon didn't say is that the patch is to uh, remove the VLA are very agree. Mm. Yeah. This is why the kernel people didn't accept it. Yeah. They are very, very agree. Yeah. I understand why it's a yeah. yeah. I, I have one more question for you. It's about the, the problem you have with the old CPU. Mm. Are they, do they feel threatened by LVM? Is that the reason why they, they don't respond? Or? No, it's that they really don't care. <laughs> they just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. They're too busy with the old Exactly. Yeah. Because they are not high position. They just. No, but yeah. I mean, they, they, they are feeling LVM breathing in their mouth. So some people feel threatened, some people are not. But the response is the same. They say they, they say they're not threatened. Could be, yeah. <laughs> So the ones I know personally uh, say they're threatened. Yeah, so one of them said to me, yeah, they know maybe in a few years' time we'll all be working on our own. Right. I'm sure it's going to get that far. Maybe. But it's, it's, that's it's a threat. Yeah, it's a good guess in my text message. Yeah. 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 Can we just tell you to keep your time? Oh, the previous time. So now I need to have Renato here now. To keep going. Yeah? How long? 25. 25. Well, I've got 25 sides, so I'm going to either take fast or else keep some sides. <laughs> so, how do I tell you if you are. Five just tell me uh, 20, you just say 5. I will understand, hopefully. Oh, perfect. I lost it yesterday already. I have a broken old one. In your pocket, you have a cell phone. How did you change this? The train? Plus? Ah. Sweet. Oh, it's not good. Oh, you can put it in the rubbish. Ah, yes. All right. I just want to change it. Anyway, I'll, I'll sit right there. When you want to go. Yeah, I think we're ready. Thank you. 